we greet our friends everywhere with Chapter 12 of Hudson and Maria, Pioneers in China. This is another in the series, Stories of Great Christians, produced by the Department of Broadcasting, Moody Bible Institute, Chicago. Almost without realizing it, Hudson Taylor had fallen in love. He had tried, since arriving in China, to ease his loneliness with the hope that he could persuade elusive Elizabeth Sassons, a girl in England he hardly knew, to come out to China as his bride. His attempts, however zealous, had failed, and failed at the same time that he was becoming acquainted with a young but mature missionary teacher named Maria Dyer. He observed that she had all the qualities of warmth and discipline that he longed for in his wife. And he must have sensed that she was immediately attracted to him, although she was still a decorous Victorian spinster. After a separation of several weeks, in April of 1857, Maria received a letter from Hudson in which he revealed his growing affection for her and his conviction that God had brought them together. I cannot but believe that God has given me this great love I feel for you, and I thus dare to hope that you might consent to an engagement to To me. me. I I beg beg you not to send me a hasty refusal. This would cause me the greatest anguish. But I pray that before long all these doubts and fears of mine might be resolved by your sweet person, and all my fondest hopes realized, most sincerely and affectionately, Hudson Taylor. Oh. Maria, is your class still working on their tests? What? Oh, yes. Maria, the letter from Hudson. Yes, he's asked me to Consent to an engagement. Oh, my. I've got to see Miss Aldersey as soon as possible. Do you have to? Of course. She's my guardian. I must have her permission to accept Hudson. Well, Maria, you may have to coax her. I'll go at the end of this hour. Oh, Mrs. Bossom, I'm so happy. Maria, what on earth is it? You look as if you've run all the way. And it's my prayer hour in five minutes. I've received a letter from Hudson Taylor. I presume you would not think of accepting him? Uh, uh, Well, why not? You cannot be serious. I am serious. Well, Maria, he hasn't anything. He's not for you. There are so many objections that anyone would have to him in terms of marriage, of course, that I wouldn't know where to begin. I don't know what you mean. Well, for one thing, he's scandalous. The way he looks with that black pigtail he wears and those Chinese clothes. But he's a... he's a laughing stock. But but it helps him so much in London when he preaches. The, The Chinese aren't afraid of him. But in the cities, the ports, he's a disgrace to the missionary enterprise. I don't think so. Are you contradicting me? Oh, I'm, I'm sorry. I, I didn't mean to. And he hasn't a penny. Not a penny. How would you live? I don't know. I, I hadn't thought about that. Maria, it isn't as if you haven't had other offers. There are two or three fine young men you could marry if you want to marry. But I don't love them. And you don't love him. I don't know what's got into you. Perhaps you need a rest, a change. But you can't be serious. Love? Why, you hardly even know him. He doesn't even have a mission board behind him. He's not even completed his education. He has no family connections, and you come from a fine family. Have you thought about that? No, but... Oh, he's a, a wild person. He's been connected with a most peculiar missionary, that ranting Scott Burns. He goes anywhere, does anything... He's a Plymouth Brethren. He 
He's short and you're tall. Oh, please, Miss Aldersey, I don't want to upset you so. How dare he? How dare he presume to write to you, daring to ask your hand when you're not of age? Uh, perhaps I might write my uncle in England. Since he's my legal guardian, perhaps I ought to ask his advice. I am your guardian in China. There's entirely no need to write to your uncle. I know perfectly well what he would say and what grief such a scandalous affair would bring him. You must write Mr. Taylor. Yes, indeed. And right now, sit down at my desk. Please, won't, won't you excuse me from doing this for a day or two? M meeting Hudson and, and feeling so strongly for him. I can't help but feel the Lord is in it. Sit down. Enough of this nonsense. Right. My dear sir... I have made the subject of your letter a matter of earnest prayer... But, but I haven't had time to... God, ...to God, and I desire to know only his will and act in accordance to it. You do want God's will, don't you? Yes, but... And I... though it does indeed give me no pleasure to cause you pain... I must answer your letter as appears to me according to God's direction. And it certainly appears to, to be, be my, my duty, duty to, to decline, decline your, your proposal. proposal. I regard you, dear sir, as a brother in Christ and hope ever to bear towards you those feelings that disciples are to bear one towards another. But ask me not for more. I request you not to refer to the subject again, as I should be obliged to return the same answer. Very truly, Maria Dyer. Oh, no. No, it can't be. Oh, Lord, I was so sure. I was so sure you were giving her to me. Oh, Lord, what does this mean? <laughs> I can't stay, Mrs. Jones. I'm happy, of course, that the fighting is over now and that you and your family have returned with Hudson Taylor to Ningpo. I understand Mr. Taylor is to be here. He's staying in your house. Of course. Is something wrong? Something is most certainly wrong. I can't believe he would have the effrontery to return to Ningpo. He dared to write to Maria, asking her hand, no less. Since Mr. Taylor is to be staying with you, I thought I ought to make something quite clear. He is not to try to see Maria, ever. It is my understanding that attachments like theirs seem to be made in heaven. It is a very serious thing to interfere. Interfere? I am Maria's guardian. Her guardian is in England, Miss Aldersey. Why not write him? It is quite unnecessary. Thank you very much for advice that I don't need or want. I had no idea that you would be taking that man's side. I'm taking no side at all. The matter does not concern me. Then you will promise absolute secrecy in all matters that concern Maria? I will do nothing to forward it. You have my word. Thank you. That's something, at least. But I cannot maintain any such barriers of secrecy as you suggest. It would be impossible to promise such a thing. I've got to be going now. I'm very, very sorry you feel this way. I wouldn't expect you to understand. But if she were your charge, you'd feel quite differently. Good day. Why, Miss Aldersey, come in. Come in. I'm sorry to barge in like this. I can only stay just a minute. What I have to say concerns Hudson Taylor. Well, surely you can sit down and have some tea. Oh, no, I'm much too agitated for that. I suppose you know that man has asked for Maria in marriage? Why, yes. As a matter of fact, I do know. He wrote to us before he wrote to Maria telling us of his plans. And you didn't try to stop him? I believe my husband replied that he had our most fervent prayers and our hopes that God would give him happiness. Not with Maria, he won't. Are you so sure of God's plan? I have come here to ask you not to support Hudson in any attempt to see Maria. Why? Because I am responsible for her. 
because I know Maria better than you or anybody else, and I have to think of her welfare. I can't have outsiders trying to arrange meetings for that man with Maria. Please, Mrs. Grohl, believe me. I ask with only Maria's interests in mind. I can't refuse your wishes. You are her guardian in China. But I can't agree with what you're doing. You promise? Yes, I promise. <sighs> Warm? Yes, yes, Missy Odyssey. Would you please make me some tea? I'll have it in the sitting room. Yes, Missy. <sighs> I have never been so tired. I'll get it, Wong. You go ahead with the tea. <gasps> Hello, Miss Aldersey. Could I speak with you, please? It's just as well that you've come. Come in. First of all, I want to say that I'm very sorry to be causing you such anguish. Ha! I realize that you object strongly to me as a suitor for Maria, but I don't understand why. Aren't you a little late in coming to see me? Late? Yes, late. It was my understanding that a gentleman spoke first to a young lady's parents or guardian before asking her hand. Oh, of course. How stupid of me. I'm, I'm so sorry, Miss Aldersing. You'd know, of course, that Maria is not of age. She is just 20. No, I didn't know that. But I ought to have spoken to you first. I'm so sorry. I beg you to forgive me. I mean you to know, Mr. Taylor, that I will never give my consent to Maria's marrying you. She would be throwing herself away on you. Why? You're nothing but a dreamer. You're aimless. You don't know what you're doing. I've seen you get a bit of money and give it right away to the Chinese, leaving yourself as desperate as before. How would you provide for a wife? Well, God would provide for both of us. Oh. Maria told you in her letter not to refer to this subject of marriage again. Maria showed you the letter she wrote me. I was there when she wrote it. Oh. Oh, I see. How could I answer to her uncle if I, for one moment, permitted the thought that perhaps Maria would come to her senses on her own? Answer to her uncle? But I, I thought you were her guardian. Well, I am uh, in China. Her uncle is her legal guardian, but of course he's in England and can't be expected to cope with all this. Then, then you're not her guardian. Just in case you have any hopes from that quarter, Mr. Taylor. Let me assure you, I have already written to Maria's uncle, Mr. Tarn, about your impudence. He will soon know all about you himself and will be able to make his own judgment in this matter. But if he would consent, your objections would be removed. An impossible expectation. But yes, certainly. Uh, won't you reconsider, Miss Soldacy? It, it was wrong of me to write Maria without your consent. The truth is I never thought of it. In Yorkshire, we aren't so careful about such things. A I... gentleman would have thought of it. Which just shows all the more how unsuitable you are for a girl of Maria's upbringing. Good day, Mr. Taylor. Good day. You've heard Chapter 12 of Hudson and Maria, Pioneers in China. This is another in the series, Stories of Great Christians, produced by the Department of Broadcasting, Moody Bible Institute, Chicago. Chicago.